Shalom, you're watching our Sheva TV. I am Yoni Kempinski, and this is our Daily Edition. Security sources are summing up Thursday as a, thank God, successful day in the war against terror in a counter-terror protective edge operation. The forces are continuing to fight the Hamas and find and destroy the organization's terror tunnels. The idea of soldiers confront terrorist threats every day as they are operating to dismantle the Hamas terrorist infrastructure in the ground phase of the operation. In this video, the IDF paratroopers explain how they fooled an attempted ambush by terrorists in Gaza. One of the important things in order to reach uh, success in this counter-terror operation is of course the cooperation between the different parts of the army. In this video we can see how the IDF ground, naval and aerial forces work together to take down Hamas terror targets in Gaza. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met today with the British Foreign Minister. Netanyahu thanked Britain for its support and stressed the need to understand Israel's struggle to defend itself in light of the UK's own history. There's only been uh, one other instance where a democracy has been rocketed and pelleted with these projectiles of death, and that's Britain during World War II. Uh, Israel is undergoing a similar bombardment now. Uh, we're responding in our own way by targeting the rocketeers and seeking to ferret out these uh, terrorists who are hiding behind civilians while firing at our civilians. This is a double war crime. And naturally, uh, it's made more difficult for us to fight this criminality because, as I've just shown you, the terrorists are fi uh, firing rockets from schools, from mosques, from hospitals, uh, from heavily civilian uh, uh, civilian uh, populations, uh, and we have to uh, try and are doing our best to minimize civilian casualties, but we cannot give our attackers immunity or impunity. Uh, we seek as best as we can to target them, but all the civilian deaths that are there, and we regret each one of them, uh, are the responsibility of the Hamas. Britain has been very clear, I have been very clear, Prime Minister Cameron has been very clear, that this current cycle of violence was triggered by Hamas firing 
hundreds of rockets at Israeli towns and cities indiscriminately and in breach of international humanitarian law. Britain has also been very clear that Israel has the right to defend itself and its citizens. The parents of US-born fallen IDF soldier Max Steinberg spoke with us today. They said that they're overwhelmed at the outpouring of support and condolences from Israelis across the country after their son fell in the battle in the Gaza Strip. We met the parents at the hotel in Jerusalem where the residents and visitors came to pay condolences. I just feel all the love. My feelings are, I can't, we just, I cannot believe all these people are, are here for our son. And it, all the people that are here give, are giving us strength to get through this horrible time for our family. And I would really like to thank everybody that is here for being here and to support our family. How do you understand this phenomenon? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's connecting to what brought, uh, what brought your son to here. Uh, Max went to, was in the birth, went to birthright with the t our two kids and he just fell in love. And he, when he went to the cemetery, he was very touched by one of the, by Michael Levine. And when he, he from what I understand, because I wasn't here, but with one of his friends, um, he was just so touched by it. Obviously a lot of emotion. Um, it's like a roller coaster ride. Uh, we've gone from uh, a devastating, you know, conversation at our door on Sunday to a open arm environment that has just done everything they can to help us live through this very uh, trying time, and it's been tremendously comforting, to say the least. A word about the decision to bury him here in Israel. It's the the correct decision, and it was the best decision and it was validated by our experience since we've come here. Um, I think everybody knows that we have not uh, been to Israel until this particular trip, so we were living on the experience of our children. But once we got here and once we've been embraced by so many wonderful people and the beauty of the country and what, what it all stands for, there is no other decision. We spoke also to some of the visitors, those people who came and felt it important to come and pay condolences to the family. Oh, he's the most loving, funny, smart kid. He's amazing, has such a great spirit, and I'm so sad that we lost him because he was such a sweetheart, and it was great that he fell in love, came here, served, and it's just something that's so tragic that happened to him. Every boy down south is our son. We all have, we, we all have 40,000 children down in Gaza and when one of the sons dies we have to we have to show solidarity with the family. It was very important for me to come here. Um, I just I guess I feel very connected to all of the Chayalim and our whole mission going on now. Um, my brother was in the army so I know what it's like to have a Chayal Boded in the army and unfortunately I wasn't able to go to the funeral but Max um, represents courage and admiration and I have so much admiration for him and he's a hero and I give the family a lot of credit that they respected his wishes to come here and he, he died a hero defending our land, defending our nation and um, I think, um, well I know that he'll always be remembered as a hero. It was important for me to be here today because I felt that as a Jewish people we all have to come together for events like this and really support each other in tough times like this. We're happy to be here today to support the family. We're also from Orange County, California and we also have cousins who are Chaylim and some are reservists who are just brought in and we feel for the family and we want to help support them especially during this tough time. It's important for me to come and show support for Max to show him that lone soldiers are not really alone in this country. Everyone is one big family. I'm Israel Chai. What does this tragedy do to people who are thinking of the option of being a lone soldier? If anything, it makes me want to come over more, seeing that Max can do something like this and you know, he did what needed to be done and gave his life in the most honorable way possible. So, if anything, I definitely, I know some other friends as well. We got another U.S. Marine in the group and another firefighter. They want to join as well and makes me want to join even more. One thing I've learned, I'm here a year, a year and a half, and what i found is that when things like this happen, 
We, the loss is so great by everyone. Everybody mourns every loss of our young people. And uh, the whole, all of Israel is in mourning because we lost something precious in our life. Why was it important for you to come today? Because I have a good life. And it's due to kids like Max that we can live the way we do. I came here to, to say that to the family. At the funeral, um, uh, Max's brother Jake mentioned Bob Marley and how much Bob Marley meant to Max and to the family. And he mentioned a quote, um, if, you, if you live alone, you live in vain. And if you live for others, you live again. I was here earlier today and I felt after I left that I just wanted to give the family something. So I went home, I printed that quote out on my computer and I wrote on the bottom uh, from a family in Israel that Max lived to protect. And I framed it and gave it to the family. One of those who uh, came to pay condolences was Miriam Peretz. Peretz is a famous mother in Israel. She lost two of her sons in two different battles fighting the enemy. And ever since she is promoting the ideas of Jewish pride in the Jewish land. I lost two of my children in this war. But I want to tell you why Max died for us, for this day, for these people in Israel for all the children and every time when we walk to the malls and we we be in the sea we remember max because we know this is the life when you see the life you see max and please know that in the darkness you can see a light and the life are very very strong and we continue we can continue we can bury our children and continue and we pay a big, big price for this country, for to be here free, for to live for our children and our grandchildren. And I love you so much. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you for your kind words. It means a lot to me. I'm Thank sorry. You. Thank you very you much. So much you lost it. Thank you. Trying to fight the uh, UN decision to investigate Israel and not the uh, terror organization Hamas regarding the conflict in the region, the uh, ambassador Eviatar Manor, who is the permanent representative of Israel to the United Nations in Geneva, addressed the UN Human Rights Council, said that Hamas is the one who's committing war crimes, not Israel. This council should stop looking for the coin under the street lamp. It can regain its moral authority by unequivocally condemning Hamas. It cannot be supportive of an organization that is no different than Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Boko Haram, Hezbollah, and other extreme radical Islamist organizations that negate the very essence of human rights as we know them and threaten democracy, the rule of law, security, and stability of a country, an entire region, and the whole world. What this council can do is reject outright and vote no on the absolutely one-sided resolution which will be presented to you. What this council cannot do is stop Israel from exercising its right to self-defense. Thank you, Mr. President. Thousands arrived yesterday to participate in a major prayer at the Kotel, the Western Wall in Jerusalem. They prayed for the peace and the well-being of all the IDF. The theme of the rally, as one man, as one heart, was organized under the auspices of the Yida Brut organization. Participating in the rally were the chief rabbis of Israel, Rabbi Yitzchak Yosef, and Rabbi David Lau, and other leading rabbis and educators. The participants prayed for the safety of our IDF soldiers who go out ready to sacrifice their lives for the safety and security of Israel. Flyers were distributed nationwide last week to various youth outreach groups, universities, colleges, and synagogues to maximize turnout to the rally. It was also promoted on social networking platforms, inviting all of Israel to participate. Okay, that's all for today's edition. We'll be back next week on Sunday with more. Until then, we hope for good news from Israel and from around the world. You can get all our news updates and briefs and in-depth coverage of what goes on in Israel and the Jewish world here on Arutz Sheva, Israel National News. Shabbat Shalom.